A lot of baseball to be played, but once we get beyond this homestand, once we are done with the troubled Diamondbacks and the young struggling Marlins, as this thing turns to September 1st, all the schedule is really, really rugged. Let's talk about some hot bullet points topics to talk about. I don't understand why he would say this, but then again, I didn't understand why he said that, talking Manny Machado, what he said this week in the Padre Clubhouse, what he said that after the Dodgers in the World Series a couple of years ago. Why would he say in the midst of the up and down, in and out, good and bad performances, his own year-long struggles, why would he say, we don't want any bandwagon fans? In other words, he's kind of tired of the heat, tired of the booing, et cetera. Why would Manny Machado say that? Just like at the end of the Dodgers run there before he left, he said, well, I don't have to be Johnny Hustle. Why would you say that type of stuff, especially in a community that has now had 50 sellouts at Petco Park for a sub-500 team? Just don't understand that. Let's talk about El Nino. And I'm not talking about weather. I'm talking about, well, maybe I am, the hurricane on the base pass last night. How about the brassy steal of home by Fernando Tatis? One of my big concerns was he didn't look right over the last group of weeks. I mean, he's, he had the stretch. He hit 109. It was amazing. but And I think he's been playing hurt. I think there's something going on. Either it's shoulder, fatigue, ribs. He has run into a bunch of walls. But then all of a sudden, it's, he threw this light switch on, goes from first to third on a really bad pickoff throw. And then... He kind of looked like Jackie Robinson at third base, dancing mm -hmm. down the line, watching the pitcher, pitcher not watching him, boom, gone, yes. home. Pitcher never even threw the ball. Catcher stood there dumbfounded. So did Juan Soto. So did everybody in the stadium. I mean, he he just kind of edged his way down the path. We could kind of sense, is this going to happen? And then, boom, he was gone. I mean, it was a phenomenal individual play. He plays like that. This team wins. I will say this, and I, and this also links to Machado, and it probably links to Soto. John, they have played so many innings, so many at-bats. They never come out of the lineup. And the 162-game season is such a brutal grind. Bob Melvin, well, I guess when the players play well, everything is okay, but I'll just ask this question. Here we have Josh Hader, elite closer, Josh Hader pitches three times in 12 days. Mm. And now, granted, Padres were behind the scoreboard. Uh, they don't ask him to go an extra inning when the guys in front of him all have really bloated ERAs right now. So that's the use of Hader and who you can trust in the bullpen. That becomes a discussion point with Melvin. Yeah, add into this. We have the kid catcher, Luis Campusano. Please explain to me why this kid would have a couple of games where he'd have four base hits and not be in the lineup the next night. It's happened three times now. How is that possible? I understand you got Gary Sanchez. You're trying to get other guys going. But if the kid's hot, the kid ought to be in the lineup because you're running out of schedule. You need to win games any which way. And your kid catcher comes off a couple of four hit games and he's not in the batting order the next night. And then the fans. I give the fans a lot of credit. They've put up with a lot of negativity and a lot of disappointment. And then there was this lady in the left field upper deck. <laughs> Holds up a sign. Baseball terminology for DFA means? Uh, yeah, release. Designated for? Assignment. assignment. Holds up a sign. Yeah. DFA dash AJ. Ah, Harsh. Okay, it's coming. Fans have spoken. Anyhow, so those are some of the storylines with the Padres. Padres get the Diamondbacks, uh, you know, this four-game series. Uh, Arizona is kind of wheezing. They get Miami in here after that. And then, and then obviously, the schedule is going to get tougher. So tell me, Jekyll, Hyde, pick a topic off the table, yeah. respond. You're all over the road on me, just like your team. Yeah, this team is <laughs> unbelievable. So love Tati stealing home. Did you feel that energy? Oh. It was like when he was the kid that came up and was a 2019 season, and he was electric and just changed the whole vibe in the stadium. 
that's the Fernando we want, you know, and he's smiling and laughing and it just brings everybody up and the fans. It brings everybody no, it went up. crazy. Should have run back out of the dugout with the sombrero on. Yeah, exactly. So where is that Fernando? Like to your point, maybe he's been hurt. He just never seemed like that guy, but man, he flipped a switch. Boom. Um, the other comment, you know, th that I'll make is about Campisano. I agree with you. He is a really good hitter. Um, and Sanchez had that grand slam, the first one of the year, um, earlier, uh, a couple of days ago, but it seems like those two are very good at being catcher DH flip flop because who else you got? I mean, well, you had Troy, but that was O for the acquisition. And then yeah. you got Garrett Cooper's got a couple of hits, but, and then Ben Gamble is kind of interesting, but you know, I think Campisano just bests them all. So unless Melvin is so reliant on that lefty righty matchup thing, you know, sometimes you just got to play the hot hand regardless of what side of the bat, a plate they swing from. And what do you think about DFA AJ? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, everyone's looking for a scapegoat, you know, and I'll tell you what I is. I mean, AJ is, is, is no saint. He, he, he's made mistakes, but I, my opinion, he's made way more good moves than bad. And, you know, when you got this all-star roster together and they don't hit and some of these guys don't pitch, that's not really his fault. I mean, he's put together this ensemble. And meanwhile, the farm system is in the top 10. Did you see that? They just ranked the farm system. So I, I still think AJ should be safe, but who knows? I mean, the fans are beginning to mutiny right now. That's the second best placard I've ever seen at Petco Park. The first one was your Giants, Barry Bonds. Okay. Probably the same woman in left field that <laughs> held up the placard. Yeah with hypodermic needle when mm -hmm. bonds came to home plate this is at the height of the i did not use steroid era yeah well my my favorite sign it wasn't at petco it was at viejas arena it was the hacksaw big head you know bouncing around there with the show <laughs> okay so we go from the padres 